All right, I want to talk about some mushrooms today. We uh, went out and picked some, and uh, I want to talk about how you can identify different mushrooms if you're getting started. Now, the lobster mushrooms, these are the easiest to get started with because they're quite undeniable. Um, they are uh, lactarious mushrooms that have been parasitized by a parasite and lactiflorum hypermyces, I think it's called, or something like that. But then they're very, very difficult um, to confuse with anything else. They're quite uh, unique looking. And so if you pick one, you might think that this looks kind of, kind of grody there, but really, once you, once you shave that off, there's nice white meat inside. So it's just a matter of cleaning these up sometimes. And uh, you know, might want to take off this bottom part. If there's any mycelium on the bottom, I put that in the yard. I haven't had great luck with that, but I still, still try to do that. Maybe shave off the, some of the edges. But then lots of nice edible meat there. I should probably scoot this away from this cordinarius. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so identifying a mushroom, well, there's one that's easy because it was parasitized. Um, you can also do a spore print. And we did a spore print of this one, an agaricus, agaricus, I believe. And you just put some drops of water on the top, put it on the paper, put a glass, a glass over top of it, and uh, the humidity makes it drop its, its spores, I infer. So a spore print. And then the color of the spore print is one way that you can identify mushrooms. Um, we did a big, huge spore print of this one. And uh, Agaricus campestris is what, uh, what we've, we're looking at. Um, our, our vincis, maybe, for this big one. But at any rate, it's not yellowing when we cut it. And um, I guess when they're young, if there's a whole bunch, you could kind of compare. Young ones, the gills inside will be, will be kind of like pink. So that's that one, and um, that one um, is edible. We're going to look at these puffballs now. Puffballs are edible. Inside, it should be solid white. Let me cut these open, see if we get one that's, that's uh, turning. And then you wouldn't want to eat that. It'll start to turn to spores, and it'll be like the puffball you're familiar with where it's um, brown, all brown, and you squeeze it and spores come out the top. But these are edible. They have yet to turn to spores. And sometimes you can get big, giant puffballs, too. Um, of course, I'd probably trim off this bottom. And uh, so all these puffballs look good. That one is a little soft. They start to get soft first. But uh, these all look good, so we're going to eat all these puffballs. Any mushrooms, that any wild mushrooms, you want to cook them. So, just something to know you want to cook. Um, any wild mushrooms, and if you're new to eating the wild mushroom, don't eat a ton of it. Just eat a little bit. But uh, the puffball, its unique shape is a way to identify it. Um, kind of like this, the unique color of the lobsters that were parasitized. Now, this, this is from the Belit family, and Underneath here, these are pores, not gills. And so the shape of the cap, its color, whether it's pores or gills, or, and there's a third one, um, that's another way to identify this bottom part. The, uh, there'll be like a covering, a vulva, they call it. And then from there, it goes up to the stem. And then you'll have a, a veil. Now, this one. This one is really interesting. Um, we think it's a cordinarius, but it's purple. And let's, let's cut into this one here. Purple. Very odd. And this, the veil, if you look at this, it's a very web-like. It's a web-like veil. And so with that web-like veil, and a couple other things. That puts it, uh, I'm to cut this off. I thought you might be able to get a better view of this webby veil. So I don't know how well that came through in the camera. But the veil, the stem, vulva, the cap, color, whether it's gills or pores, these are all ways to tell um, and identify your mushroom. 
But this being a Cordinarius, that's uh, in a group of like 2,000 different types, and some of them are deadly, and uh, so it's really hard with that. Um, with the Belites, um, this is a uh, pores here, and you pinch it to make sure it doesn't stain blue. That would mean it was a jack-o'-lantern, which is uh, antipeptic or whatever, make you have a stomach ache. Won't kill you. Um, but there's lots of different types of Belites and Aspen Belites and whatnot. Um, but I don't believe that there is a uh, toxic, poisonous uh, mushroom with the pores like this. Uh, that, that would be deadly. It wouldn't be deadly. So um, at any rate, we eat the Belites. I've eaten a lot of the lobster mushrooms. I've eaten corals. I've eaten the puffball. Um, I've had some. There's Amanita family, Amanita cochisiana, Amanita cesarea, Amanita muscaria. Don't eat that one. That's the red one with the white dots on it. But, so there's these different families of mushrooms, and um, so you can look at what's in that group, what's in that family of mushrooms. And other than that, um, you just want to make sure that your mushrooms aren't buggy. So if you cut the stem off, all those little dots, those are bug holes. So this actually I wouldn't eat, unfortunately. Um, that one looks quite a bit better. So um, a couple of these beliefs we will be eating, and um, these lobsters, these puff balls, um, this agaricus here, but uh, not this cordinarius. I was hoping to find some batorcus. That's kind of a new one, uh, a new one for us. Uh, we learned about it, but we haven't found any edible ones yet. And those grow in disturbed soil. They have black gills and sort of a split veil. Uh, kind of interesting. But there you go. Um, there's a little bit on identifying mushrooms. Uh, these are the ones that grow around us. How to do a spore print and other ways to identify mushrooms and uh, the ones we're going to eat today. All right, have fun. All right, I figured I should show you how we like to cook the mushrooms too. Um, if you really want to taste the flavor of a mushroom, we just uh, fry it up in a little bit of butter. You could use coconut oil or, or any type of oil, but uh, just that so you can taste the flavor of the mushroom. Now if you're not a, a huge fan of mushrooms, uh, you want to put just a little like Tuscan garlic salt or something like that. Um, the mushrooms really pick up flavors. I've eaten a lot of puffballs so um, you know I know what they taste like. So what we're going to do, we're going to add some sausage to these puffballs. It's going to be excellent. And uh, this elk sausage. We've had some before. It's, it's awesome. Got it from a friend. Um, with the lobster mushrooms, my favorite thing to do with them is to cut them into little strips, into a whole bunch of little strips, and fry them up, and add a little bit of cream cheese, a little bit of sour cream. We had some real crab that we added as well, and fried that all up with some butter. Then in the end, shredded some cheese over the top and it was like a crab dip. Really awesome. So you can make like a, a crab dip out of the lobsters. Um, they're good just with butter as well. But uh, this guy, shoot, we might make like a mushroom burger out of this guy, like a portobello mushroom burger. But we're going to cook it first, of course. Always cook your mu mushrooms first. But there you go. Have them, uh, you know, with hardly anything to get a flavor or flavor them up.